use of the overdrive distortion pedals, but the digital ones that are fully programmable, which is kind of weird and a strange concept for a lot of us because we love to buy a new pedal every month, which you don't do if you have a pedal like the X-Drive from IK Multimedia. Maybe you don't, maybe you do, I don't know. Um, the X space is the reverb, the X time is the delay, the X vibe is the modulation pedal, and they make sense as a multi algorithm pedal with a lot of sounds all in one box, fully programmable, all that stuff. As an overdrive or this distortion pedal, it's strange. And of course they do exist. There's the, I think, OD200 from Boss, which is doing this in, in, on a digital level. Uh, there's the Strymon Riverside digital, uh, the LA Lady, I think it's called, Source Audio. Well, now there's the X Drive. And I think the special thing about it is how it integrates with the software. And I think this is where it can convince some naysayers that would usually not play a digital drive to jump on board because you can take the things that you're using on your computer or your laptop at home, fully program it, make a song with it, but then take that sound on your live board. Now let's look at it and go through the specs and all that stuff. Um, we've done this three times. I will try to stay awake while I do it a fourth time. This is a paid video. I will bitch about stuff because they're paying for my time. Not for my opinion. They can't. This is a hardware pedal. Works fully by itself. You never have to put it on a computer or an app or anything. Not necessary. It does 24-bit 192K AD and DA conversion, which is the highest sampling rate and bit rate that you can get. So super high quality. It's, it's even unnecessarily high. Really well built, made in Italy, based on the functionality and look, kind of what Strymon pioneered uh, in that form factor. If we look at it, you know, you got the three switches, aluminum chassis, really nicely done, all the ins and outs in the back. To go bank up, you do two switches, bank down two switches. Um, these are hard clicks, and I don't quite know why they did that, because that does annoy me. Why aren't they soft clickies? But on the back, let's go there. It is not like the other pedal, fully stereo. It is mono in. Cap sim out. The others also have the cap sim, but here there's a special out for the cap sim. Then there's an output to your amp. And then there's an output for headphones so you can practice with it. MIDI in and out. The out can be configured to be through. And then there's an um, expression input and USB and 9 volt. The expression, let's talk about what expression can do really quickly. You can hook up an expression pedal and morph between two completely different settings. So all knobs can be in one setting, then uh, on uh, toe down, all knobs can be in a different setting, which is cool. So you can morph between completely different sounds. You could even uh, move your mid-frequency back and forth to do semi-wah things, whatever you want to do. You could also switch between these two settings with a single foot switch, which you can hook up and then click and then have kind of two variations of a preset. You could also use the expression input for a dual foot switch, which then would replace your bank up and bank down. So you'd have these three for the three presets, ABC, and then a dual foot switch for bank up and bank down if you so prefer. That's kind of cool. Let, let me look at my cheat sheet. I don't, I want to make sure you know all the features. Um, oh, something that's kind of cool. So you, you go to a different bank, shows you right now that the preset is not selected. Select this preset. Oh, it says Henning Drive. Great. Um, and when I push the same preset again, it goes into X mode, which actually really just switches to a different level. It just boosts the level on most presets, but you have to read in the manual exactly what it does. But when you're momentarily holding another preset, it switches to that preset, and then you let go, and it goes back to the other one. So you could go... Like junk, 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 dead little, little junk, junk, junk. Oh, junk, 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 dead little, 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 little. Oh, junk, junk, junk. You know stuff like that. Very cool. That's pretty much it. We're gonna go into the software integration because when you are getting this pedal and you're registering it with a little card that's in the box, make sure you find the card. It took me a while to know how to do it. Uh, you can actually scan a QR code. You go to the website and you're registering, not 
to control this remotely, but you're registering a full software version of it that runs completely independently in a standalone version of Amplitude SE or something, or in your DAW. So you could use all those overdrives in your DAW to uh, drive or to fuzz drums, to run vocals through a green overdrive style pedal tube screamer. Uh, it is fully functional by itself. That's what you're getting with the pedal. And you can run it in Amplitude as well. And that looks like so. So here's Amplitude and I've got all four X gear pedals unlocked. And when you go to drives, there's fuzzware drives up here under distortion right here. There's the X drive. And you just drag this in like any other drive and it will show up like this. And then you can program it just like you're programming the actual pedal. So there's the knobs on it. There are different presets in categories of different algorithms or different kind of drive pedals. Down here you change, down here, you change what kind of pedal you want. So I'd go to a yellow pedal, a booster, a treble booster. So presets up here algorithms or pedals down there and then you just set them up depending on oh the boost doesn't have a oh it just says volume uh so we're gonna go to modern there's your drive and all that stuff but you can see there's little dots here and those dots get you onto the different pages i'll show you how to get to the pages on the actual pedal in a sec but it's a lot easier to go to these pages when you're doing it in software and again this is right now not connected to the pedal has nothing to do with it. It's standalone. You can use this independently of your pedal. Your pedal can be on your board, tucked away, and you're using all those sounds you're using live on your pedal board in software. Okay? So I can go and save this, you know, play it, use it anywhere I want, then save it. Here, Henning Smell. I don't know, because it said smell. And then I can go into the librarian. And now I'm hooking it up with USB. Again, before it wasn't hooked up. There was purely software. Up here, oh, look at that. X drive is green. I click on it. It's scanning the pedal to make sure it's got the right presets. On the left side, you will see what's stored on your computer, all the stuff you programmed with your plugin. On the right side, you will see what is in the pedal. Now, if I switch on the pedal, you can see that the librarian switches with it. Or if I switch on the librarian, you can see that the pedal actually responds. So over here, there's Henning Smell. That's the preset we made. And I can actually drag this on Henning Drive, override. And now on my pedal, there's Henning Smell. That's how easily you take the software program, the software preset you created because you were creative, you're working in Amplitude or you're working with your um, software digital overdrives and then converted it into a preset that actually works on your pedal board. So you don't have to have your pedal board in front of your computer. That's kind of neat. So let me show you how the pedal actually works. Here you change the model or the pedal shows you down here. Here you change presets. Let's go to zero. And here you got the standard drive bass middle treble volume. Parameter gets you to the special presets. So you click it and then I've got color. But that's only for, you know, this one for the modern color, mid Q, mid frequency, EQ position, noise gate, noise gate threshold, noise gate release, noise gate depth, compressor, compressor sensitivity, and so on. And there's the cap sim. Cap one, two, three, four. We're going to listen to the cap sim later. Back. There we go. So I go to preset number two. That's a fuzz. There, all of a sudden, everything changes. There's still noise gate and a couple of other things that are always the same, but there's no color, for example. So which parameters are available for each of the pedals? you're going to have to go into the manual and check that out or get the pedal and find out. But read the manual, you can see what pedals it's based on, what's behind the name and stuff like this. 
each parameter can be remote controlled with a continuous controller through MIDI. So you could be doing really crazy shit with EQs and driving, go, uh, loads of drive, little drive, loads of drive, little drive, go, ee -oo, ee -oo, ee -oo. if you want to do that with continuous controllers. You can do crazy stuff you can't do with a normal pedal because everything is completely remote controllable with MIDI. So what we're going to do now is two things. We're going to go take this into a real amp and listen to it as overdrive pedals or distortion pedals. And then we're going to listen to some of them with the cab sim out. <gasps> to test this, we're using this Valiant Sooth... Sooth okay, I can't say that. Soothsayer. A uh, modern strat type guitar from the Ukraine, from a friend from Valiant Guitars. Really, really cool guitar. Look at that top. Cool back, aluminium plates, five-piece neck, really cool volute, locking tuners. This is a good guitar. Going into that pedal, through my tuner, whatever, but then into the Tone King Sky King down there, and into a 412 Queenback loaded cap in the Ox. So I'm using it like I would be using any kind of overdrive. I'm not going to go into tons of amps because the possibilities would be endless. So this is my clean sound. I have to disconnect the computer. I disconnected the USB because that definitely creates a ground loop. Ooh. That's the tonking. And that's a modern, whatever modern. That's already kind of cool. I'm going to move on. Let's, let's not go presets. Let's actually just skip through the algorithm. That apparently is a boss something, metal something. And now my cue is too high. I'm going to go through presets. Interesting, I find the fuzzes on it very cool, which is strange because I'm not a fuzz fan, but I like those. <laughs> Tracking on the 
uh, octave fuzz is not great. IK has problem with pitch. <laughs> It's okay, no, that's that that that's fine. That's fine. I lied. Here we have a DS one type. is a monarch is a, a governor and I like mode is supposed to give you more of it I don't really hear that here we got rats but they're cats <laughs> for everything I would use a DS1 for. Absolutely. Uh, SD1, not DS1. So <laughs> It'll, it works. And here's a tube screamer. Sorry, it's been a long day, my playing sucks. <laughs> I 
MXR something. Got a booster. Amp. A treble booster! Not with that amp, of course. But it does what it's supposed to do! There's a lot of good stuff in here! I don't know what that is. Ah, that does some bit crushing and really cool distortion effects. damn impressed and if I had this thing on the table I could very likely have a song and really find a lot of sounds that complement each other really well. Really fat rhythm, really nice midi stuff and even some fuzzies and some crazy shit without going into tons of analog pedals and I don't think I would miss my analog overdrives. I am very impressed with what this thing can do. Interestingly almost more impressed than the effects pedals, which is kind of weird. So let's go DI. So I will pull out my... Going into the amp sound thing here. I think I just hit save because it's trying to name it now. How do I get back? Here we go. So we're going to go all the way here. And now we're going DI into the computer with the cap sim out. <laughs> It's not shit. 
it's not what we just had, but what we just had was an M for 3000 bucks with an Ox for 20 or 1200 bucks and, and so on and so on. We had a very nice chain of real gear. Now we're going direct. All that I'm missing is, of course, a little bit of the moving air, which you can do with a little bit of reverb and some treble, which you can get because it's got a treble knob. <laughs> So that's cap number one. Way too much low end there. That's what kids think metal should be, when in reality that's really what it shouldn't be. You could use that to go directly into the PA, go front of house, and it wouldn't suck. Would you use that to go into your audio interface? Well, you could, but you have this in Amplitude, and then you'd rather probably use Amplitude and then use cabs in there, which is much more flexible. <laughs> kids this is not a modeler this is distortion pedals directly into a cab there's no amp in between but the sounds are okay uh, so if I go to different presets here that's very important to note there is a mix at the very end right here is a mix and for bass players you can actually mix in the distortion or the fuzz to your heart's content. And that's very important for bass players, which make this a great overdrive slash fuzz whatever for basses. That's kind of useless. record with that I recorded albums with the pod too and that was actually worse than that so I dig the cap sim out I think it's very useful I gotta say I'm very impressed with this however it's not going to hit a major market because so many of you buy the mysticism of I gotta have my king of tone or if it's not a real tube screamer from the 80s it's not right and there's so much bullshit going on when it comes to overdrives and distortion stuff. My fully honest assessment is if I have this on the table with the real amp, I could play loads of songs. I could probably record from metal to blues to anything and record stuff that you would listen to go like, yeah, yeah, good tone. He probably had a king of tone and shit like this. And you would have no idea that it's a 349 euro digital overdrive. I think the sounds are fully useful. I think the cap somehow is cool. The uh, full software integration is good. I don't like the hard clicky switches. I don't know why they did that. I don't like that it's a very 
you know, I mean, literally 80s style display. We have high resolution displays now. And I know that probably would have kicked the price up by 50 or 100 bucks, but there would have been so much more information in super small, high res on the display that really could have helped because having these extra parameters right here on one knob. Yeah, okay, you got the basic parameters here, but the, the, the way it always jumps back and forth completely confuses me. And the interface is better in the Amplitude software version. However, it's not ridiculously better. It's still kind of the same representation. Interface, I think, could be more up to date. It's a very modern pedal with a lot of modern features. Oh, did I mention it's also an audio interface? No, I didn't. You can run Amplitude with this. You can run a guitar into this, into Amplitude, use Amplitude, use Cubase, use whatever DAW, and then uh, headphone out. It doesn't have stereo out. The others have stereo out to your monitors, but you could, could run headphone out um, and use this as an audio interface. So 349 bucks, audio interface, loads of great drives, DI solution for your pedal board to go to front of house comes with a software version of itself to use in whatever way you want. Program the software, transfer to your pedal board. This isn't going to convince you diehard analog guys. I get that. For a fly rig where I need in a small space the most flexibility Possibly without having to have a captor, a cab M, some kind of IR loader, because realistically those four caps are usable if you tweak the presets. For a fly rig, this is a good solution. You gotta have some fuzz, you gotta have some heaviness, you gotta have some classic sounds, and um, everything in one rather convenient package, it'll do the job. Interestingly, the one that's the least interesting to me is all of a sudden the most interesting out of the four because I think the X-Drive convinces. It'll absolutely find a space on boards where people aren't snobs and just need to get the fucking job done. Well done, IK. I gotta say it. Thanks for commissioning this video. You guys have been awesome. This has been hours and hours and hours of me sitting here making the same video four times, but it had to be done. Please follow me on, you know, Facebook, Instagram, all that stuff. It's important. The numbers do count for the companies that I work with. And uh, use the links. That helps me too. If you can't support my Patreon, that really, you know, a buck a month isn't going to kill any of you. But if enough of you do it, it really helps the channel out and it helps Leslie out. And yeah. so thanks for doing this. Hopefully I can save you some money here or there with my recommendations or not. Sometimes I don't. Sometimes you buy everything. That's up to you. Uh, thanks to my friends from IK Multimedia. They're great people. I love the fo those folks. And I hope I see them at Gear Street next year again. And um, links below. I'm going to put animals at the end. Give me a sundown.